You're creating a universe. We're also creating a world, a terrestrial world here on Earth. It's not just a movie about a guy from Earth, but it's about him going to a place that no one on Earth has ever seen before. So finding a angle on that has been one of the most fantastic parts of this. This is an old skull, oh, it's all rotted away, isn't it? They're just using it as a texture. We have a group of concept artists who come together and what I would try and do is to start the ball rolling. Let's go out there and sort of kick around ideas. Me, the first thing is to be true to the characters and respectful of the fan base. But you can't do it too literal because some of it just wouldn't work directly pulled off the page. Some of them were so insanely obscure that it would seem impossible to be able to make them work. I just love that challenge. Kilowog and Tomore were the most challenging because they're the most scrutinized by everyone, producers, directors, everyone involved, because they have to hold up close. They really gotta look good down to the poor. Kilowog is an interesting looking character to begin with. He looks like he's a thug, but he's a very sensitive, intelligent character. Aaron Sims was involved for quite some time before I came on board. I was given his Kilowog to then evolve further explore other nuances of his face. We've been spending time working up his facial characteristics, you know, to make him into somebody that we can we can be scared of and be angry with and laugh at and all these sorts of things. He's probably the most popular character in the in the Green Lantern core. As you are the first to be chosen, I've been sent to welcome you here. Tomorea is based on the comic book character quite closely, so we've been paying a lot of attention to getting all of us look right. Tomorea was a tough one, and same as Kilowog, it was started with a number of different designers, but I know that I took Aaron Sims' base and started to evolve that. Played with body types and facial features and, and details, but then it came down to final skin color and trying to get that perfect chicken-lizard skin hybrid. My main tasks were developing Oa, a girl named Michelle, mow and take it over from where I left off, and really start to spell it out beautifully. But the organicness wasn't so much due to the fact that we were trying to make something organic, but that we were trying to figure out something different looking. So we were looking at a lot of organic forms. When you try to think of something about how would an alien conceive of architecture, you know, when you really think about that, there's no way you could possibly comprehend it. It, it was very difficult, I think, but exciting. I've been trying to compose a city that isn't like an eternal city. So it's not like Los Angeles, you could say. It's more like Jerusalem or something like that, where it's just something that's been built on and built on and built on. So there's different architectural styles and different ways of living, you could say, in this place. It's not a huge place. Martin prefers to think of it like a garrison town in a way. This is where the Green Lanterns do their business. At the centre of the planet is this huge void and in the, in the middle of the void is the central battery. And there's been a lot of work gone into tying together the central battery in terms of its design with the portable batteries. The lantern had to be specifically designed for our version of the story. We had to come up with the origin, where it was from, why it was there. The lantern also has to have a quality that has been passed on from generation to generation. Almost like a king sword or a king gun. It, the craftsmanship that went into it was, was very important. Not completely ornate, so it's not functional, but understood that this was a very, very powerful part of the lantern core to be passed on from one lantern to the next. We've been working on ring designs and lantern designs for basically a year and a half. We massaged it a little bit and we had a version made that Martin and Donald kind of quite liked a lot of, but the costume design. Nyla was unhappy with the overall sort of feeling of it. So it became such a collaboration to get that ring out. It was so important. I wanted it to have a gravitas to it. So we sat down and sort of completely reconceived it as something sort of bigger and chunkier. At the same time, the art department was doing something very similar. The story's been told a hundred times over and over again in comic books and in different media, but the way that we were telling it had to be new and exceptional. It had to be something so fantastic that it would attract a new audience as well as please the old audience. It was a moment of, of pride that we could all share, all of us involved, that we did make the right decision pushing the envelope. It's been very wide open on this, and I think as a result we've been able to think very laterally and kind of come up with the funkiest ideas, you know. It's been a lot of fun doing that.